and welcome back guys to a brand new video and today as you will have probably well, hopefully seen this is going to be quite a long video because I'm here with my highlights from the Real Online Racing Association American Sports Car Championship the final round of the season the final race I will be doing on Forza Motorsport 6 the 10 hours of road Atlanta now I'm sort of this qualifying session first of all I'm sort of just going to talk a little bit through you know sometimes there will be my fastest laps off the session in here as well as well as a few little mistakes here and there as well but I sort of wanted to spend the first 10 minutes of this video sort of just talking about the whole way this series works and everything about that and sort of just a bit of a general thing about this video as well because this obviously my last falls race I sort of want to make it a little bit special down at the bottom you will see my twitch recording unfortunately that's just the way elgato and twitch work together that it does come out above and on, like on the elgato recording as well which is a little bit of unfortunate but you know we, we i'm sure we can gloss over that it'll be interesting to see what the numbers are like throughout the course of the streams but yeah the, sort of the whole plan for this race was to stream the whole event i am going to be commentating different parts of the race at different times so for example this qualifying is being commentated on Friday morning. The race is Saturday afternoon. So I'm sort of just trying to commentate it bit by bit, you know, sort of give my thoughts and feelings, you know, without too much hindsight coming into it. You know, it does sort of play quite a big part when you're commentating on things. So I sort of want to try and avoid that for this final race. But, you know, Road Atlanta, a track that I really do quite enjoy on this game. This uh, Ford D uh, Daytona prototype car is, is pretty damn good. As well, you know, it's not something that I've ever really driven before. I really haven't done that much practice for this race. You know, you're given 45 minutes worth of practice time in for this qualifying session. So, you know, you can basically get to a pretty comfortable lap fairly quickly. You know, I've done about 50 laps worth of practice and you can probably squeeze about another 38, 40 in this session alone. So hopefully, you know, we can get down to a fairly decent lap. Lap times around here. I was aiming for a sub 1 minute 10. I was thinking, you know, that would be quite a solid lap. I'd heard rumours that some people might be able to get close to a sub 109, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. I actually opted to take part in the first qualifying session, rather than, you know, any of the later ones. Unfortunately, I couldn't do Thursday nights, or like, they have one at 8pm British time on Wednesday, and then one at 8pm Wednesday in American time, and then the same goes for Thursday as well. I couldn't unfortunately do the Thursday one in at British time, and I don't fancy being up at 1 o'clock in the morning to attempt to drive a on Forza, so, you know, I'll have to wait and see how well I do fare, you know. does mean that people, you know, sort of have you as a target to beat, which is a little bit annoying, but, you know, it's not really something that I'm going to worry about too much. It's, it's a 10-hour race. You, you can't really just try and focus on qualifying. But, yeah, the aim was to try and get a lobby for the race, you know, so we're really, you know, getting action with some of the best Forza players, you know. I sort of wanted to finish on a high on this game, but, you know, we shall wait and see what does happen on Saturday as to whether that does happen when it comes to the race format unfortunately you can't do driver changes on Forza so it does mean that you basically race for 1 hour 40 minutes in your stint so it's technically only about an 8 hour four, uh, eight hour 20 minute race technically but it is over the course of 10 hours you basically do an hour, hour and 40 and then they track how much distance you've done and then they set up the next lobby so then people do another hour and 40 I will be hopefully trying to live stream the whole race event but um, I'm going to be racing for the first hour and 40, then I'm going to be missing an hour and 40, then I'm going to be racing again, then I'm going to be missing, then I'm going to be racing for the final one hour 40. During the times when I'm not racing, I'm going to try and hop into the lobby and just set, you know, my POV on my teammate Isaac. So hopefully, you know, we can try and get on board with as much action as possible. You know, a 10 hour race, anything can really happen. It's sort of one of those ones where connection plays a big part. I've done a couple of six hour races with EVR as well, you know, we've done a couple here and there, and I think in the first one we did, we came second, just four meters ahead of third. That was ridiculously close in the end there, you know, that was an absolutely crazy result. But yeah, no, hopefully it's not as tight as that, but as it is, as long as we finish ahead of the other team, then I'm not really too, no, I'm not gonna complain too much. We've got myself and Isaac in the Daytona prototype, and then we have got Ben and Kieran in the Lamborghini Huracan GT car as well. So, you know, we've got a team in both which is always good to see but you know starting out the blocks fairly quickly there I'm down to a 1 minute 10.0 nice and soon there which I was quite happy with and you know it's sort of about now just trying to get some good laps in nice and consistently here because you know this isn't just about trying to get one lap pace out of the car you know you can try to concentrate on you know being consistent lap after lap as well which you know sort of wanted I sort something that I wanted to focus on as well during this session but you know we'll have to wait and see how well that does fare, but yeah, 1 minute 10.6 
I was very happy with it nice and quickly in the session. But it already seems less than five minutes later, we're already starting to push a little bit quicker than that. You know, hopefully we can get some good laps under my belt. And, you know, I sort of wanted to try and improve myself. I do find that I am stronger in the faster cars. It's a little bit to do with manual clutch as well. But I sort of find that I am, I can respond a little bit more consistently than some people when it comes to faster cars. You know, we'll have to wait and see how well that does fare for myself. You know, we were going up against some really, really big falls names for this race. We had drivers from AMS, F4H, a couple of esports and cars guys as well in this event. So, you know, a lot of the big names that we were going up against and, you know, hoping that, you know, we could sort of just come out of it just about alive. You know, if we can make it to the end and finish fairly solidly, you know, we'd be very, very happy with that. But, you know, it's sort of one of those ones, it's the final race on the game. You, you just want to finish it and finish it well there. But I managed to get into the 1 minute 9s just about there. There was a bit of a mistake through the final couple of corners. So I was going to try and push once more, see if I can go any quicker the lap straight after. And then we'll have to wait and see what does happen with that. But this Ford, very, I felt very, very comfortable with it. There were talks about which car was quickest. It was sort of a toss-up between the Ford and the Chevrolet. After looking back at qualifying, it seemed that the Chevrolet did have a little bit of a pace advantage. All, I think, three of the Ford cars. If I'm not, well, three of the top three Ford cars all very, very close, and there were a couple of cars a little bit quicker and a little bit slower, so you know, it's hopefully going to be quite an interesting race. Fuel-wise, this car really does not go very far on fuel. It can do nearly 15, it can do about 14.7 laps worth, so if you want to try and stretch the 15 laps worth, that's about 18 minutes out of the car, you know, you do have to lift and coast just a tiny bit. You sort of run out of fuel around about here on the end of, well, most of the way around at lap 15, so, you know, it does 14 quite safely there. But coming through the final couple of corners once more, and we've actually been able to nail that final chicane a little bit better than we did the lap before. So we are going to take off another tenth off my time there. Now down into the 1 minute 9.8 there. So I was feeling pretty confident with that. You know, we'd already been able to smash my aim within the first 10 minutes of qualifying there. And then we sort of went through a bit of a 10 minute phase. You know, we made a pit stop just to try and get on some fresh tyres. You don't really have to worry too much about fresh compounds on this game, you sort of just got to go when you when you really need to. It's also, there's a weird effect that I found on Forza recently. I don't know, obviously, if it's just placebo or not. There's no real way to prove it. But I found once the tyres get to about 55-60%, it seems, obviously, you've got fuel as well on, so the car does get a tiny bit lighter. But I found once you get to about 55% on the tyres, the car does actually seem to get a tiny bit quicker again. I don't know if it's the weight of fuel seems to outbalance it or whatever but yeah the car does seem to somehow get a tiny bit quicker once more on this game tires really not too much of an issue during this race it is all about just making sure you pit when the fuel is gone you'll never run out of tire wear you know the tires will be on about 30 percent by the time you need to refuel so there's never going to be an issue about that unfortunately there's no sort of keep on a set of tires on forza you know there's no limited sets you just keep getting new and new and new fresh rubber on this game, which, you know, it's a little bit disappointing, but, you know, you know, there's nothing you can do, you know, we can only sort of hope that they add these little features on Forza Motorsport 7, but I'm, I'm highly sceptical, you know, Project Cars 2 is looking far more likely that it's going to have that sort of thing, and F1, well, it's had it since 2010, so, you know, F F1's a space age ahead of everything else there, but that lap, I managed to get down to a 1 minute 9.5 there, which actually, for me, was a ridiculously quick lap, to be honest, I think my PB was around a 1 minute, five, uh, one minute 9.7. So I was very, very happy, you know, that we've been able to bring in a lap like that nice and early there. And then sort of between there and the end of the session, it sort of went downhill a little bit. I sort of ran that lap and sort of felt that I'd basically maxed out. So any time, you know, I was just even a tiny bit ahead, I sort of just had to try and, you know, push the car to the limits because if I took a bit of conservatism, then, you know, there was absolutely no chance I was going to beat the lap there. Coming through that corner, I actually got it a little bit better than I did on my fastest lap. So we'll have to wait and see if I've been able to make up any more time here. As we come through the double right-hander here, you can see we are just even more up there, about one and a half tenths up. But unfortunately, we just get a tiny bit of traction bog there, and that's going to completely ruin my run all the way down this straight here. And I think, having a look back at quite a few of the laps in this session, I think for me, if I managed to string up a perfect lap, I could have probably got near enough a one minute nine dead, I would have thought, based on some really, really, cons like, if I basically got perfect split times in every single sector, but unfortunately, you know, that's not how racing works there, so I come through the final corner once more, and I'm gonna, unfortunately, lost, like, just a tiny bit of time there, at uh, 1 minute 9.6, but, you know, because in that big mistake, I was fairly happy with my consistency there, but coming through 
on to what was going to be my second to the last lap of the session there. You can see we're over a quarter of a second back on this run, so we clearly didn't nail the first few corners right there. But, you know, we basically nailed this middle sector here, and this is just really what was quite frustrating, you know. Always the problem with qualifying. You can see, coming through the double right-hander once more, we're actually now been able to catch up a one, well, one and three-quarter tenths there. So that's just near enough two tenths that we could have found there. There was about a tenth I could have found in the first sector, and then sort of another tenth, tenth and a half in the final sector. And if you add that all together, you know, we were looking at near enough half a second's worth of savings. But having a look then at the end of qualifying there, and we were just behind YMTV Mellish, so I think we were down in P9 or P10, I can't remember exactly there. So, you know, we were looking fairly good relative on my one lap pace. AMS Nightmare able to get a 1 minute 8.6 there. That was a ridiculous, ridiculous lap. So well done to him. And having a look at the teams, we will be starting P5 on the grid ready for the race. Obviously, this has been commentated before the race, so hopefully, you know, we can get some good luck during the race there. But let's move on then into the American Sports Card Championship, 10 hours of road Atlanta. So here we are then, ready for the start of the race. And the first uh, stint, if you will, is a uh, full formation that we do one whole lap around the circuit, but all the others are very, very different. And now, as you can see, I've obviously now done the race for the rest of this commentary. It, we have got a lot of highlights to get through, about 40 minutes, so hopefully, you know, you do all stick around for you know, this whole journey, if you will, throughout 10 hours of Road Atlanta. Now, coming into this first in, I sort of just wanted, you know, to be consistent, not have too many issues with the car, and it was also a good chance to try and learn lapping the GT cars. You know, I sort of wanted to try... And focus on that as well during this first stint. Make sure I was even more consistent, ready for stint 3 and stint 5 of the evening, yeah. But trying to get some heat into the tyres on this formation lap here, you know, it was going to be a good chance for me. I ideally wanted to break away. We had Carlson's Raider, who was representing the HCR car, and then Wind Charger and Dragons Young for the first stint of the evening. So, going to be interested to see how well these guys do fare. Carlson's Raider, their team, was only about three hundredths of a second off Isaac and I. In qualifying, so it was going to be very, very interesting to see how well we did stack up to those guys in this race. The uh, Rebellion can't actually go that far on its fuel, so that sort of played into our hands a bit more. Like, if I did have an issue near the start, we could sort of be able to overcome that again. And you know, if they have problems, then they may have to six stop, or sorry, they may have to seven stop some of their stints. So, you know, it was all about trying to make sure you gain as much uh, distance as possible, as you know, not as quickly as possible. But you sort of want to try and get, uh, you know, I'd like to come out of this first and say like a quarter of a lap advantage over the guys behind. So if Isaac does end up with any issues on his stint, then, you know, he can have a little bit of leeway to have a bit of a gap if he is needing it. But coming through the final chicane, then ready to start the AACC 10 hours of Road Atlantic. Going to try and line up alongside, we're on pole though, so we've got the optimal run down towards turn one here. Carlson's ready to have a look. To my outside here, but on the grid then, ready to go, and it's a lights out, and away we go for the start of the ASCC, 10 hours of Road Atlanta there, Carlson's ready, not actually getting off to a particularly good start, the Rebellion very, very quick through the corners, but had very, very little down the straights here, so these first couple laps, going to be interesting to see, you know, how well that does fare, and that was way too close to the wall already in the race, there we got Carlson just proving how much extra downforce that Rebellion really has, you know, it's got so much better corner speed than this Ford, but, you know, this thing absolutely demolishes it down the straight as well. You've got about a 15 mile an hour speed advantage, so, you know, it sort of swung both ways, if you will. So, if the Rebellion was ahead, you know, it could probably keep ahead, and if, obviously, the Ford was ahead, then it could probably keep ahead as well. But, obviously, the big thing about long races like this is just about trying to make as few mistakes as possible. So, you know, uh, ideally, you know, don't want to really hit anyone, don't really want to, well, I don't want to hit anything either. To try and keep the car clean through this first and see where we are at the end, and then obviously work on pushing later on during the evening if needs be. You know, we don't really want to risk it too much if we don't have to, but, you know, we're in B-Lobby, but I sort of want to try and be fighting with the a lobby drivers as well you know if we can try and push up with a few of those guys you know maybe sort of try and get within that group so you know they don't have to think just about who's on track with them they also have to sort of start worrying a little bit about what's going on in our uh you know lobby as well but at the end of lap one they're fairly clean lap overall on the hollow we've managed to gain about a second second and a half advantage over carlson's radar there so that is 
very, very ideal to kick off the race. You know, we don't really need him trying to breathe all over the back of me in the early stages of this race. If I could try and gap him nice and early, then that would be very, very ideal. But we'll have to wait and see how well that does fare for me later on over the course of the evening. But, you know, these first couple laps, I hadn't really done any sort of on race day practice. I sort of just wanted to, you know, not really worry about it too much and then just get in the car and try and maximise as many laps as I possibly could. But, you know, we'll wait and see how well, obviously, I am able to do with that. But, you know, we've we kept it nice and clean on the start, and that was sort of the big important theme. You can see already on the mini-map, though, we're, we're about halfway around the track relative to the GT cars here. So it was sort of my worst nightmare when it come to the GT cars. You know, we'd be lapping them from sort of lap 8 onwards right through to the very end of the race there. Obviously, once they spread out, it's going to... It sort of makes it a bit easier, sort of makes it even more difficult, you know, where you're just consistently having two lap GT cars. Now, after the first one was in the pits, the first GT car had to lap was three Helias there. So in the Ferrari, you know, down in 10th place there. And, you know, on the straights, it's very, very easy to overtake the GT cars. When you get caught up in at the corners, it can be a real, real pain to try and get around them. You know, it's it's so difficult because, obviously, the, the speed difference between something like this a Ford Daytona prototype and something like a Corvette that you can see just ahead of me here. I'm going to try and have a dive down the inside there. It nearly turns in on me there. You know, you do sort of communicate with the other guys, but you sort of hope, you know, they do. They are aware of you being there as well. But it's things like that, you know, that in 15, 14 minutes into the race, you know, you shouldn't really be risking it as much as I probably did there. But sometimes, you know, in the bid to try and make yourself a bit more of a gap, then sometimes, you know, you sort of just got to go for that sort of thing. And hope that it does pay off. But, you know, not too many risky moves during the first in of the evening. You know, we sort of need to try and build up a nice early race gap. Rather than worrying about anything else in the start of this race. But 20 minutes in to the whole endurance. 1.30th of the way through the race there. So, it really does say a lot about how long this race is. And we're almost ready for my first pit stop here. The car can go about 14 laps worth. 15, obviously, on the formation lap. Where, you obviously, you do save a tiny bit of fuel. It is quite tight. If you don't do a formation lap, you can usually get to about the chicane and it runs out of fuel if you try and do 15 laps. So, you know, if you've got that little bit of advantage at the start of the race, it is very, very ideal there. But we are now opting to make our first pit stop of the race, as you can see on your screens, and hoping that it can obviously work out for myself. And, you know, need to try and stay out away from the other Daytona prototypes, ideally. You know, if we can try and gap them nice and early on in the race and sort of, you know, if we end up having to lap them, then obviously the normal blue flags rule do apply. Unlike when we try to lap the GTs where, you know, we have to make the move on the GT cars. Obviously, they they can't block us or anything because there's just no point doing so. And But, you know, we if we try and line them up down the straights, they pick a side and we have to move around them because obviously there's a slower car and it's the closing speeds are very, very dangerous. They've exited in the pit lane now. The guy in P2 actually opted to dive into the pits on that lap as well. But by the end of, well, 30 minutes into the race, you know, we, a couple of guys taking even more pit stops here. And these three were actually fairly grouped together at this moment of time. And that was sort of really helping me out because if they're pressurizing each other a lot more, then I sort of don't have to worry about, you know, concentrating on those guys. I can sort of just try and close up to them and lap them given the opportunities. And this sort of really was when the lapping started to begin here. We've already been able to lap, uh, lap wind charter there as he's opted to take more pit stops. I think everyone so far has actually opted to take their second stop. But myself here, this first hit of the race, I was just going to try and go as long as as possible there, but we've got Dragon's Young just going down the inside of his UB there, and I'm now going to try and have a look down the inside of Dragon's Young down into the next chicane. They're going way, way later than him on the brakes there, so, you know, nice and clean, you know, these guys don't really want to get in each other's way, you know, you cost yourself far more in the long run by fighting than you ever would, especially, you know, when you're fighting with drivers from other lobbies as well, you can't really afford to try and slow each other down too much, or you will just end up ruining your own race more than anyone else is there. But coming to the end of, uh, well, 35 minutes into the race, we're going to opt to take my second pit stop of the day. They're near enough where we have just about lapped P2 at this moment in time, but obviously he's pitted one more time than me. He's going to gain about half a lap back over myself there. But now, moving on to uh, uh, 40 minutes into the endurance now, and we're closing in on a couple of the GT cars through the first sector of this lap here, and it gets so, so tight. You know, you just try and get up ahead of them through that first sector there, and they're barely able to achieve that there. So it's getting a bit tight, you know, I'm not going to lie. You know, especially coming towards cars at turn five here, you know, you just sort of get parked behind them, you try and risk it around the outside, they understeer 
out towards you there and you have to sort of use all the curbing as well as you possibly can then you know you want to avoid contact at all costs because any time you know you end up in a collision with a gt car you know they're they're built like rocks on this game and especially with the anti-griefing system if you run into the back of a gt car you're going to get a huge amount of damage there but carlson's raider in the pits once more here and coming through the end of the lap we got frez just ahead of me there and unfortunately just makes a mistake you know loses the back end of the car there and that really really cost me there a huge amount of damage on the front of the car there and i'm gonna have to try and limp the car all the way around this lap now as i was just saying you know that anti-griefing stuff if you run into the back of a car even at that sort of speed you know with no malicious intent as you will obviously seen it completely destroys the front end of your car as you can see i can barely keep it on the track at the moment and that was really really gutting so early on into the race as well you know i thought at that moment in time you know the race is over it's completely ruined there's nothing going to be able to recover from that but you've got to remember we're, we're 45 minutes into a 10 hour endurance race so as we come through into the pit lane on the end of that lap here going to be going to be pretty painful to see how much time we have lost to Carson's Raiders here we've still just a lap ahead of him as he has had opted to make his third pit stop of the race here you know we, we just so desperately you know want to try and build up a nice big gap in the first stint and I honestly believed at this point you know we could probably get Isaac about a 10,000 foot advantage over the other guys there so i saw you know um i think you know we could safely agree both isaac and i that i was probably the quick driver at the two of us i managed to uh, get qualifying quicker than him by about a second there so it was sort of you know i wanted to try obviously for both our sakes you know i wanted to try and give him as much advantage as possible but also you know give myself as much of an advantage as possible over the other guys there but extend pit lane we've still got about a nine eight thousand foot advantage over carson's radar there so it's, it's still looking strong after the first 45 minutes of this race and hopefully you know we don't end up with any more hiccups like we did with Frez in the early stages of the race and I think unfortunately there were a couple of other issues with Frez during the evening there so which is a little bit annoying and a little bit frustrating because obviously everyone just wants really clean race and everyone wants to be able to predict what each other are doing as well so sometimes you know don't get me wrong I'm not trying to have a go at Frez or anything but it is a little bit frustrating when someone doesn't seem to be, you know, sort of fully, uh, you know, concentrating as much as others may like there. But car parking it behind, I think that was Frankie Fresh there leading the GT cars. Certainly, so when you know, you don't want to make contact with any of the guys. But especially, you know, leader in prototype versus leader in GT, that would just be absolutely horrific there. But we've completed the first hour of the race here. So it was looking very, very good at this moment in time. You know, I think the first hour in all honesty was probably... For the EVR Motorsport DP car was probably the most hectic, to be honest. You know, Isaac, obviously, I don't want to talk about him too much during the first stint. You know, I want to sort of talk about how well he did during his stints. You know, sort of, you know, it was sort of like trying to, you know, keep it clean, keep it consistent. You know, you've got to be cautious in races like this. If you run 10 hours of full attack, you are going to crash and you're going to lose way more time than you would ever gain. But one hour, 15 minutes into the race now, we are on the back of Wind Charger here. Going to try and have a look. Down the inside in towards turn one here. Go from very, very late back, but he does give me the room on the inside there. He runs wide. You can see there's another car at the road that's running massively wide as well. That's Carlson's ready there. Coming on the track, nearly running into the side of you there. We nearly go into the back of the 4GT as well. We're just about able to pull around the outside of him there. But now we are a lap ahead of everyone else in the field there, including everyone's pit stops as well. So we're, we're fairly a lap ahead now as we lap another car there of Frankie Fresh once more there. So this is looking really, really good for ourselves at the moment you know we've been able to build up a gap of a lap now in the early stages of the race you know in an hour and 15 minutes that is very very strong for isaac and i here and hopefully you know we can just try and hold on to you know the advantages that we are able to gain when we can do so and you know coming out of stint one and you know being able to talk to isaac about having you know we've got a lap advantage over everyone else you don't need to worry about it too much you know you can only you know i hope it filled him with confidence as well you know we're, we're both trying to push as hard as possible there but coming to the end of the first stint of the evening there 20 minutes 15 on the clock we stop when the clock ticks down to 20 here so this is we're going to be ending just a little way down this long back straight here probably one of the most ideal places to finish a stint because you know you gain a bit more distance under braking at the end of the lap there guys but coming through 205 miles done on the cart during that first stint there fairly solid stint if I'm not mistaken that left us p6 overall I think or p5 overall just behind uh, four of the A lobby cars. We were ahead of one of them as they did have a few issues in the first in of the evening there. So that was looking really, really good for ourselves there. We've done the hardest bit 
that we need to all evening long. You know, we've been able to keep the first hour nice and clean. And now it was ready for Isaac to get in the car and hopefully, you know, hold on to, a, you know, the one lap advantage to hold on to would be very, very nice. But, you know, we weren't really too worried. As long as we didn't lose out on a lap to the race leaders, that would be the most ideal thing there. But Isaac will start on pole. The grid remains the same for every single stint as it did at the start of the race there. So, you know, nice to know that even if, you know, we have, we end up three laps down in one stint, we'll still start the next one from pole. You know, you've got that sort of bit of an advantage at the start of your stints, which, you know, is really, really ideal to have. Even It's even just those little things like starting on pole is so ideal just to be able to, you know, you can't, you don't need to worry so much, especially with uh, Rebellion just behind you. You don't need to worry so much about, you know, them trying to get a good run down towards the next big braking zone. You know, you've got the fastest part of the track, you know, the fastest sort of 20 seconds of this whole circuit. You know, you can easily gain sort of two, 300 feet over the cars behind. But we're going to have a look from behind Isaac here. Turn five is actually where the race starts for the other four stints here. So Isaac now is ready to go then for his stint of the race there. And it's lights out and away we go. And Isaac off to a very, very solid start here. Sort of hoping that Carlson's Raiders does any you know get a little bit hassled by the cars behind and it's looking like third place there but i think that's mean drifter thought about going for a move there but isaac he's kept it nice and clean through the first couple of corners here and i'm still looking behind him you know watching out for any rogue dive bombs here but you can just see how much time the rebellion does lose down the straight you know it's so so grippy through the corners but down the straights it has got absolutely nothing there as i think mean drifter once more is going to try and have a look up the inside of the rebellion there he does able to fly past him in that Chevrolet there, so quite ideal for us as well, you know, second place is a little bit further back than, you know, than they probably would have preferred there, but we're going to go back to game cameras now, sort of just a little bit easier, a little bit more recognised there, and that's a really, really solid start to the race, Isaac already got about a couple of second gap to the guys behind here, and down towards turn one there, even fourth place, Dragons Young was trying to have a look down the inside there, but you can see through turn one there, how much speed the Rebellion gains, but he just turns in there a little bit, like a huge amount of contact, somehow they have both been taken out with that. I think Dragon's Young has been wrapped in that as well. So really, really unfortunate for all three of the other Daytona prototype cars in the early stages of the race there. But for Isaac, that has been an absolute godsend for him. You can know, see uh, Mean Drift of the cars completely destroyed. They'll all be behind all the GT cars as well now. So, you know, for us, for EVR Motorsport, that is very, very ideal. You know, we'll be able to gain such a huge distance from that in the early stages of this race. But Carlson's Raiders still very, very quick at this moment in time during this race. You can see I'm going through party. Just having a little look at who was there. You know, really, really enjoyable. You know, I'll sort of talk about that as well. Really, really enjoyable. You know, have so many of the EVR guys, as well as LMP the lad, you know, chatting in party whilst we were waiting for our stint. You know, it was sort of, you know, you sort of think about the four drivers that are actually racing, but there was so, so much more to it with everyone else, you know, in party chat, you know, keeping us motivated, having, you know, a lot of chit chats as well just between stints here, you know, it's so, so helpful, you know, just to be able to take your mind off it whilst focusing on it in the background as well, but Isaac now is, well, by the end of this first couple of laps, once everyone else has made their pit stops, he's got nearly a lap's lead already there, which is very, very ideal to say the least, but that was sort of really the main thing that happened through his stint, Isaac did a fantastic job of just keeping it clean throughout his stint there, you know, really, really give him so much props for being able to do that, you know, he just went perfectly, he, he, he's very conservative as Isaac, and that was probably a really, really good mix, you know, I personally like to attack quite a lot during these stints, you know, I want to try and push, and Isaac, you know, if there's like a GT car in an awkward place, he is more than happy to hold back, and you know, sort of just attack it when he can there, and you know, that sort of plays into both of our strengths really, you know, we've sort of got that varying strategy, which is always really, really good, so Isaac, yeah, credit to him, did it really, really well during his stint of the race. I think in the end, he was able to clock 204 miles on the car as well, which was a really, really good job from him. You know, we've got 409 miles already in the tank after just the first couple of stints there. And I think that left us up in about P5 of the race. It was looking very close between us and P4 after the first couple of stints there. But now we're ready to move on into my second stint of the evening here through hours four till six of the race. And, you know, once you get through the first couple of hours, you know, it sort of simmers down a bit. Everyone's a bit more confident with their cars and ready to go. But I think I'm almost ready then to start. We're sort of trying, like, to gain a bit more of an advantage over the other guys. We've now got HCR Sandman, Mean Drifter, and Dragon's Young there. Dragon's Young opting to take the first three stints there. Props to him. 
I, know, I, I was happy to do three stints overall, but three in a row would have been absolutely horrific for myself. You know, I would have just completely broken down and just given up and cried in a corner if I had to do all three. So mad respect for Dragons Young for opting to take the first three stints for his team there. But on the start then, ready to go here. And it was going to be interesting to see how quick HCR Sandman was. I speak to Noodle a little bit here and there, and he was saying that Sandman was very, very quick. So, you know, going to be interesting to see if we are able to gap him in the early stages of stint three here, but flooring it nice and early out of turn five there now. So we've been able to hold on quite nice now. And I think we've actually caught out Sandman pretty well down towards the next couple of corners there. We've already got that 100 foot gap and Mean Drifter is already trying to attack him there for P2 in the stint. And, you know, for me, those guys attacking each other, I'm just going to try and do what Isaac did and just absolutely run through the first few laps of the stint. You know, if I can try and make a bit of a gap, Nice and early on, that would be very, very ideal there. See, they're all very, very close behind. Hoping, you know, they can sort of just try and battle as much as possible. You know, don't really, I sort of, obviously, I never wish for anyone to crash. But, you know, if they did, it would sort of benefit Isaac and I a huge amount. You know, we've already been now able to got a one, about 15,000 foot advantage over the rest of the field there. So just over a lap over the rest of the guys. And it was crucial, you know, I sort of wanted to extend that because anything can happen in these races. If you say you have a disconnect with sort of 10 minutes to go, then, you know, we could try and recover that time as well. But running hugely wide through the exit of turn one there. But skipping on to my first pit stop of the day. And you can see we're already actually very, very close between Mean Drifter here. We're about a 35 minutes into the stint. And massively, luckily for me, it seemed that Drifter, Sandman, and Dragon's Young were all very, very close on pace. I think Dragon's Young, unfortunately, did lose out on a bit of a gap. But Mean Drifter and Sandman, you know, were right with each other throughout this whole, you know, sort of first stint, if you were, well, the third stint, sorry, of the race, which was absolutely perfect for me, you know, because that just meant I was able to try and pull away. And it got to the point, you know, about one and a half hours in where I was actually, you know, you go from the hunter to the hunting again, sorry, the hunted to the hunter again, is you get more and cl you get closer and closer to them. So they realize you are about to lap them. So you sort of try and focus on it, closing them up. We've got a brilliant little fight towards the end of the race where that does happen once again there. But lapping a couple of the GT cars, you can see the gap to Sandman now is about 12,000. 800 feet here. I think he's just coming through the final. Yeah, you can just see him. He's the next car at the road ahead of me there. And I don't think Mean Drifter is much further ahead of him. So this is absolutely perfect for me. You know, 35 minutes into the stint, you know, we're already looking like we can line up the other guys for a, you know, to try and gain another lap over them there. You can see, five hours nearly into the race already. And this is looking very, very strong for Isaac and myself. Already got a lap advantage in the early stage. So hopefully, you know, we can make that even more. But Sandman. Makes a huge costly mistake that hits the tire wall through turn two. I nearly run into the side of him there, but now I'm able to lap Sandman there. I don't think he got any damage from that, rather luckily for him. But that has cost him a huge amount of time there in this race. And now I've got to try and lap Mean Drifter as well, who is the next car up the road here. You can see moving on to 40 minutes into the stint now, and I'm all over the back of Mean Drifter here. Hopefully going to try and line up a move through the next couple of corners. You know, these blue flags are also, you know, I'm not going to try and force him out of the way as early as possible. Well, you know, I don't really want to have to fight with him if I don't need to there. As you can see, coming out of the next corner at turn five, down towards turn six. He's on the outside there. He's just going to break a little bit earlier than myself. I think he was a little bit reluctant to, you know, sort of move aside, but, you know, he sort of had to. And, you know, he fully accepts that all the guys in Tora tend to be so, so clean anyway. You know, they're so, so responsive. And that's really what's enjoyable about sort of racing, like league racing generally, you know, most people are very, very good. But, you know, by the end of that stint, it was actually, you know, really, really good for myself. Unfortunately, um, Dragon's Young and uh, Sandman, unfortunately, both disconnected quite late into the session there. And Mean Drifter did drop back just a bit more there, so we gained another two and a half laps over him there. So I think really now we had, coming into the third stint of the race, I think, sorry, the fourth stint of the race, we had about a four lap advantage now over the rest of the field there. And, you know, really with four hours to go, unless something goes horrifically, horrifically wrong for us, that was looking really, really good. You know, four laps, we could play around with that as much as possible. You know, if we made a few mistakes, went for a few risky moves, then it, we would still be looking very, very good. Run massively wide out of turn one there once again. But if in doubt, just keep it flat out. I don't think Frez was particularly happy with that one, but, you know, I sort of didn't want to lose out on any time or any distance there. Actually able to go very, very far in this second, in my second stint of the evening, third stint of the night there. It basically ran as perfectly as possible there, you know, really, 
really ideal. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't have anyone particularly to chase, you know, try and give you that little bit of, you know, an extra boost there. Because in a lobby, it was AMS Europa and AMS Moshes, if I'm not mistaken, were both fighting very, very closely. And I was actually up less than half a mile behind them by the end of this stint there, but just about getting it over the 208 mile mark there. So, you know, very, very happy to get 208 point, I think 09 miles out of the car. And after that, very, very solid stint. We were up to P4 overall. We were about four miles behind the top three of AMS, uh, you know, sort of AMS cars there, 4H and YMTV there. So it's going to be very, very tough to see if we could get up with them. But, you know, if they made a mistake, then potentially, you know, we were just going to try and pile on the pressure as much as we could. But moving on then to Isaac's second and final stint of the evening. Wishing him all the best of luck during this stint here. Hopefully, you know, he can once again get off to a nice, clean getaway there. Able to do really, really well during his second, his first stint, sorry, of the evening there, which was absolutely wonderful to see. But hopefully, you know, we can see what he is able to do. During the second stint, he was feeling a little bit tired. And, you know, I sort of just, we, we've got four laps advantage over second place. So I think we where Sandman disconnected we had about a six or seven lap advantage over the hcr car and then about 10 sorry about 20 sorry over dragons young as unfortunately he did disconnect fairly early on about halfway through the second stint there but you know um isaac absolutely nailed that restart once more so you know the hcr car did lose that a little bit we had they actually have noodle now in the car for the final two stints and noodle and I, if you've watched any of my vgn touring cars He's a very, very quick guy. You know, we seem to be fairly smashed on pace. I did overall able to beat him in the VGN series there, but he's very, very quick as well. So for Isaac, you know, he sort of felt a little bit pressurized by Noodle, but, you know, he's a very, very quick driver himself. As Mean Drifter, they're able to fly past the Rebellion now down in towards the Chicane there. And once more, you know, just giving that us that extra bit of leeway over the rest of the field there. And, you know, that's really, really ideal. Once more, you know, it's it's odd, you know, it's hard to explain how much confidence that really does give you. You know, if you see the guy that you expect to be fighting dropping down a little bit further down the field, then, it, you know, it fills you with even more of a confidence boost early on in the race there. But just have a look once again how much extra momentum Noodle is able to maintain through the first sector over the Chevrolet ahead of him. You know, the Ford and the Chevrolet were very, very similar. And then the Mazda and the Rebellion were very, very similar as well. You know, two completely different cars, two all completely, completely different characteristics, but both actually very, very similar on the pace when it comes to racing lap round here. But Isaac's done what he needs to in the early laps of this race here. You know, he's been able to hold on to a good little lead in the early stage there. We're going to be interested to see if Noodle can get back up into P2 if he is able to really try and pile on the pressure to Isaac just ahead of him there. Unfortunately, you know, being in spectator, you can't get as good a view when it comes to, you know, sort of seeing distance gaps and everything. But you can tell a little bit further on into the stint, Isaac was starting to feel the pressure from Noodle behind him there, which, no, completely understandable, completely get there. Unfortunately, just making a couple of tiny little mistakes, as you will have seen there. Fortunately, with such a speed advantage down this straight, you know, Noodle's not going to be able to have any sort of chance down that straight there. But Isaac... He, he did admit it as well. He was starting to feel a little bit pressurised by Noodle, which is completely understandable. But as we said, you know, we've got about a five lap lead at the moment after just six hours of racing. So, you know, we were we were fairly well poised to try. And at least, you know, unless anything went wrong, you know, we were pretty damn poised, ready to take home, you know, the B-Lobby trophy at least for the Daytona cars. And, you know, over, the overall win in Petit Le Mans from B-Lobby there. But Noodle, he's, he's you know, he's, he's closing in on Isaac at the moment. Isaac was starting to feel... As I said, a bit more pressurised by him. So, going to be interesting to see. Obviously, the Rebellion can't go as far on its fuel. So, he might try and go for, you know, it's sort of a bit of an uncharacteristic undercut there. But Isaac, unfortunately, just making a tiny little bit of a mistake as he's coming up towards one of the GT cars here. And just look, you know, he's so, so cautious as Isaac. You know, really, really good trait to have generally. But in specialist situations like this, you know, it just helps Noodle out so, so much there as he's able to get right back on the rear of Isaac's car here as we come through the second, the next couple of right-hand corners here. But once again, you know, Isaac's going to be giving a, brief, a breathing space down this next straight because just watch the Rebellion just struggle. Even in the slipstream, it's just got nothing against the Maz, uh, the Ford, sorry, there, which is, you know, really, really useful still. Like, it, it's just one of those things, you know, any sort of little advantage you can have. If you just keep focusing on that advantage that you have, don't worry about, you know, the huge deficit we've got in Sector 1. It can give you such an extra motivation boost during these races, and especially in something like 10 hours, that can easily affect you by, you know, a good sort of 10 miles 
in terms of racing there. But Noodle now opts to dive it into the pit lane on the end of that lap here. He's going to go for a bit of an undercut on Isaac here. Going to wait and see how well that does fare for him there. As Isaac still looking very, very solid and very, very poised in this race at the moment. As the Twitch stream is just about to tick over the 400 minute mark there. A couple of laps safe though. Isaac now going to come through the pits here. And Noodle, let's going to be interested to see where he does come out. Mean Drift inherits the lead. But Noodle just about able to edge out Isaac there. A little bit unfortunate for ourselves. But Isaac, you know, was still nicely close behind him at the moment. So if Noodle made a mistake, Isaac was ready to pounce once more. But, you know, we didn't need to worry about it too much, as I keep saying. I can't, you know, it's it's five laps. There's no way you, you, we, we, we can sugarcoat it as much as we want. But I think everyone understands how big an advantage five laps is and really at this point of the evening it was more about just hoping the connections hold out hope we don't end up with any sort of, you know huge crashes and then we would probably be good but coming to the end of Isaac's stint here unfortunately he did lose out a little bit of time to noodle in the long run there unfortunately just a couple of little mistakes and a couple you know a few little bottles as well unfortunately made that he did lose out on a bit more time than we probably would have liked this you can see he's still just behind noodle at this very time but I am going to skip forward just in a moment there as Noodle can see he's just got that little bit of a gap you know that we can't close down down the straights there but coming to the end of the eighth hour of the race there 472 minutes into a trip stream as well Isaac able to get just 208 miles I think uh, sorry 205 miles out of the car they're able to go just one lap less than myself and, you know over 100 minutes of racing that is really not you know not a huge amount to lose out on so GG once more to Isaac there. Unfortunately, you know, he did lose out a little bit of a gap to Noodle, but, you know, we still had, you know, a nice, big, healthy lead at the front of the field as we moved on into my final stint of the evening. Going to be interesting to see how I do fare, but, you know, we were, we were feeling quietly confident as long as the connections were holding out. You know, it was going to it was gonna be pretty, pretty good there. Coming into the final stint of the evening, though, you know, I saw how quick Noodle was during the second stint there, so I was really going to try and watch out for him. You know, I sort of, you know, you obviously want to try and win the overall race, but I sort of fancy trying to win every single stint as well. But I've been able to lap everyone during the first two stints of the evening. was hoping for a repeat, but this was definitely going to be the toughest one. But yeah, Noodle, you know, I talked to him a fair bit anyway. So, you know, we were having a little bit of friendly chit-chat as well in the party, which is probably the nicest thing, to be honest, to have towards the end of an endurance race. You know, we weren't really in too much pressure unless we disconnected in the final stint. But it's lights out and away we go. We're going to bolt it nice and early once more. Then Noodle did get caught out by that. But going to be interesting to see what strategies he does go for. Obviously, I was able to watch him during its stint four. So if he goes for any repeats, you know, I'll sort of have a rough idea about what he is attempting to do. So you're going to be interested to see how well he does fare when it comes to that. You know, I've, I've got the psychological, psychological advantage, if you want to word it that way there. But Noodle dropping back just a little bit now. Succeeds. Might get under pressure. Uh, by, I think that's Big Ben, you know, just behind him there, well, just ahead of him now, as he's able to fly past him there, so it was ideal once more that, as I was saying, you know, just to see the guy that you're worried about drop a little bit further down the field is perfect, you know, when it comes to your own motivation there, but Noodle, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to get back past him fairly quickly during this stint, but, you know, we've been able to try and do what we need to, and that's gain another little bit of a gap at the start of the stint, and, you know, especially with the way the restarts worked, it was really, really ideal for the Chevrolet car, you know, sorry, the Ford car and the Chevrolet. You know, we're able to get that little bit of an advantage and, you know, just 500 feet at the start of a race can give you a good couple of miles by the very end. But coming to the end of, you know, already only just six minutes into my stint here and we're already coming up to lap the first of the GT cars here. So this is, you know, sort of where strategy came into play a little bit more. I'm going to go down the inside of uh, the BMR driver there, but Noodle is going to dive it into the pit lane very, very early into the race there. His Rebellion car was going to struggle to try and make it to the end with that little fuel there, but it was crucial now. It was, you know, I knew he was going to try and undercut me, so it was crucial that we managed to get my way through these first GT cars nice and cleanly here, you know. So I've got to try and preempt moves so they know where you plan to go with there. But coming through the end of the, you know, sector one of this lap, and we've, we've been able to cut through quite nicely, actually, in all honesty. They're through the first four cars, so that was... That, you know, that helps you out a lot. You know, Noodle will just still gain a bit of an advantage from that is if he doesn't end up being caught in their bit of squabbles between some of the GT cars there. But by my first pit stop, uh, we were actually still quite comfortably ahead of Noodle there, so which was really, really ideal for myself. Big Ben was just going to try and go one more lap on his stint. You can see Noodle 
coming through there. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was the first time during this whole endurance, in, during my stints, that I wasn't actually leading there. So hopefully, you know, we can re-inherit the lead nice and quickly. Big Ben will have to make a pit stop very soon. But yeah, Noodle actually lost out quite a bit of time from that alternate strategy there, which was quite surprising to me. You know, unfortunately, I think he did get caught up in the GT cars. A little bit worse than I did, but skipping on half an hour later, you can see we've now got about nearly a 3,000 foot lead over Noodle here and just one hour to go of the 10 hours of Road Atlanta here. And you know, we were we were feeling good. It was it it had been pretty damn perfect for our, I think for our team the DP team. I think the only issue we'd had was literally me and Frez at the start of stint one. So you know you can't really ask for much more of a plane sailing endurance than that. But you know still one hour to go in the in the race. You know, heartbreak can that come around is obviously a lot of people that are interested in endurance racing will have known from the real life Le Mans just a couple of years back where the Toyota broke down on the final lap of the race but fortunately for us with five minutes to go we just seem to have no real issues there and as I was saying earlier on you know the hunter but sorry the hunted becoming the hunter you know we were we were nearly lapping noodle with five minutes to go of this race so I'm sort of just gonna you know leave this last sort of five minutes in of the footage here and sort of just you know leave you with the last piece of footage the last time really you know I'm gonna play Forza Motorsport 6 as well so sort of wanted to talk a little bit about that on the side, you know, and I think it was it was quite nice to, you know, come through, have a really, really successful final race on Forza Motorsport now, especially with just four minutes to go, no one would be able to gain the distance back over ourselves, so by this point, you know, we were sort of, we, we near enough guaranteed it now, I think the closest car behind me is about five laps, and there's no way they can make up five laps with just four minutes to go, especially as, you know, we've got uh, about 30,000 feet over that driver as well. So he, he, he was ours now for the taking, which was absolutely perfect for us. But I think, you know, as you can see, we're closing in on third place there once more. So we're going to be able to gain another cheeky lap over him there. That takes up, I think, actually, in the end, we finished up about eight laps ahead of second place overall in this endurance. But I think, you know, as I was saying... It was This was my final Forza race. I've been playing Forza Motorsport 6 since it dropped. It's what got me into league racing. It basically got me into uploading videos to my channel. You know, I signed up to Airwild with it. And it basically started my channel, really. So, you know, it's sort of talk about the channel a little bit more generally. I've now got 2,600 subscribers at the time of recording this. I gained, like, a 1,000 in the last 28 days, which just to wrap my head around is absolutely mind-boggling, and it's sort of a bit crazy, you know, Forza is sort of to the side really nowadays, you know, I'm far more of an F1 channel at the moment, Forza sort of started that for me, to be honest, it sort of made this all a reality, it's put me in the position I am now with 2,500 or 2,600 subscribers, which to me is, I can't believe how many people that is, but to, you know, sort of think... All the way back to when I first started Forza, I was eight seconds off the pace when it came to, you know, AOR. I was so far off, it was actually a joke. And I thought about, you know, hanging in the towel nice and early on. You know, I didn't really want to race anymore. It was so, so horrible just to be so far back in so many different series that I did. But, you know, I kept at it. I kept at it. And when the uh, Mazda MX-5 League came out on AOR, I really, really tried to push myself. And I sort of relearned Forza at that moment. I think really, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't I would have probably given up league racing on the whole, I'd imagine. You know, I probably wouldn't be uploading F1. I think to be honest, I probably wouldn't be making YouTube videos whatsoever there. So I think really I've got a lot to thank from Forza Motorsport 6. It it kick started my league racing career where I'm now fifty five race wins strong, four league titles is absolutely mad when I think about it all. But yeah, I think it's it's quite an odd one. When you think about it, what Forza's sort of been able to do for me, you know, indirectly, especially, you know, these last couple of weeks as well, I've been given some really big opportunities as well. When it comes to live commentating the F1 eSports series, that was absolutely mad when I got the offer. I genuinely couldn't believe it. You know, it's nice to know that sitting in front of a microphone and talking to a computer screen is actually starting to give me some, you know, genuine opportunities there that are actually really really big and you know Forza as I said it, it sort of just started that for me really so I, I'm, I'm not getting I'm getting you know a little bit you know, emotional if you will over this because it is sad you know to say goodbye to it two years league race on this game two years racing I've got about 40 hours uh, 40 days worth of game time which is pretty damn tragic I'm not gonna lie 
But that's all bit, well, most of that has been filled with fun and, you know, brilliant memories, to be honest. It's put me in EVR now, where I'm talking to some absolutely brilliant people, you know, racing with Isaac as well. You know, I can't thank him for the amount of help he's given me over the last couple of months. He's been going through a few little things as well, where he's just been getting some massive life, you know, life opportunities when it comes to things. So, you know, I don't really want to talk about that because that's sort of his topic as well but you know it's just crazy to think what what you know it's sort of all been able to become and forza as i keep saying stort sort of was able to start that off really which is it's it, it's odd to think back but coming to the final 40 seconds of this race then and we, we we've done it basically we have been able to we've done a uh, thousand and thirty one miles by the end of this race, which you think in 10 hours, that's what, a hundred, is that, yeah, a hundred miles an hour, just over, throughout 10 hours worth of racing, 36 pit stops as well, that's what, a hundred and, um, 44 tyres we have got through during this race, so much fuel as well, I wouldn't like to think how much damage we've done to the ozone layer then, but the final dying seconds of Forza Motorsport 6, it's 20 minutes on the clock, it's full breaks, and that has been the end of Forza Motorsport 6. We were able to win, obviously, in our class. We came fourth overall, which I was really, really happy with. I think our uh, GT car team as well was able to get third overall, so really, really well done to them. You know, EVR in these endurance races, we've been really, really able to prove ourselves against the big boys right when it really matters. You know, in these sorts of races, it's even more special to me than doing, like, a 20-minute sprint race there. But that has been the end of the Torah ASCC 10 hours of Road Atlanta. Thank you all if you've made it this far into the video. I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. This video took so, so long to edit, you know, especially to record as well. But it was all worth it in the end, you know, sitting here live commentating, well, commentating, sorry, the last few moments of the race. But yeah, we were able to win, as I said, fourth overall in terms of the whole race. That has been the end of Forza. It has been absolutely a crazy, crazy journey. But thank you all so much for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe if you're new around here and you want to see more content from this channel. But I will see you guys next time for a brand new video.